Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. And I also hope you like this new haircut that my wife's boyfriend bought me. <laughs> Anyways, as you guys know, a big focal point of this channel is research about finasteride. Here at the Hair Cafe Institute of Scientific Integrity, we have a team of dedicated solarian scientists who are hard at work disseminating very important data about finasteride. Keeping my fellow hair loss witchers up to date with the latest and the greatest in hair loss witchery is one of the main goals of this channel. But some hair loss witchers have a more refined taste and they prefer a 5 air inhibiting drug that is designed for those who enjoy the finer things in life. To them, finasteride, while definitely useful for most people, is still nevertheless a mere peasant drug that is not worthy to take on a task as important to them as stopping the slaphead curse. These exalted individuals are known within the hair loss community as the Dutasteride Master Race. To them, only the finest of 5 air inhibitors are worthy of their greatness, so finasteride will simply not do for them. Here at Hair Cafe, it is very important that the content we provide is useful to everyone and the dutasteride master race shall be ignored no longer. So, to better appease them, I have come across some preem new deets on how well dutasteride works in the long term, specifically this article here. Up until now, there really hasn't been a lot of research on how well dutasteride works in the long term. There are a lot more long term studies on finasteride, including studies showing the results of 5 years of treatment and even studies of 10 years of treatment with finasteride. These studies show excellent maintenance of efficacy efficacy of finasteride lasting as long as 10 years with no sign of any decrease in efficacy over time. In fact, we have even seen improvement in hair growth and maintenance of hair growth in over 90% of finasteride users even after 10 years of treatment. So that's why I made a video not too long back titled Why Finasteride Stops Hair Loss Forever and I'll link that video below if you want more details about the long term studies on finasteride. But what about dutasteride? Could it be that the finasteride peasants actually have the upper hand? hand when it comes to long-term data on finasteride's efficacy? Well, even though dutasteride is a stronger 5 air blocker than finasteride, there hasn't been as much research on it for treating hair loss. That's probably because it was developed after finasteride, and it is technically not approved for treating hair loss, at least not in the United States. However, it is still very widely used off-label for treating hair loss, and that's because dutasteride at 0.5 mg per day suppresses serum DHT levels by 92% versus 73% with finasteride and it suppresses scalp DHT by 51% versus 41% with finasteride. So, given this stronger effect on suppressing DHT, it is no surprise at all that dutasteride also is more effective than finasteride in causing hair regrowth, as you can see in this head-to-head -head study comparing different doses of dutasteride with finasteride. In fact, given all this data, my viewers have often asked me why I debase myself by taking a measly peasant drug like finasteride instead of joining the revered dutasteride master race. They're like, oh, Kevin, you're not worthy to join the master race. Well, the main reason I do that is strictly a personal one. It's the fact that dutasteride comes in a gelatin capsule and that I am a vegan, and therefore I choose to avoid dutasteride since gelatin is an animal product. Another reason is because I am already doing very well on finasteride, so I figure that if it ain't broke, then don't fix it. Also, like I said, there is less research on dutasteride than finasteride, and until recently, there wasn't very much long-term data on using dutasteride like there is with finasteride. So I've always felt a bit more confidence in finasteride's utility as a long-term hair loss solution compared to dutasteride. In fact, until 2016, there wasn't any study of dutasteride for hair loss that lasted more than 24 weeks. Now, there have been some longer-term studies of dutasteride than that, such as this four-year randomized controlled study of dutasteride for prevention of prostate cancer. So, there is long-term safety data on dutasteride, but until recently, there hasn't been a lot of long-term data on the efficacy of dutasteride for hair loss. So, in 2016, this study appeared from Japan, which included a full year of follow-up of subjects taking dutasteride for hair loss. This was an open-label study of dutasteride at 0.5 mg daily for 52 weeks in 120 men. As expected, there was improved hair growth with dutasteride at both 26 weeks and 52 weeks of follow-up. As far as sexual side effects are concerned, erectile dysfunction
dysfunction was seen in 12% of subjects and decreased libido was seen in 8% of subjects. There was no placebo control group, so it's impossible to know for sure if any of these side effects were due to a placebo effect. At any rate, all side effects resolved within six months of stopping dutasteride, so there was no evidence of any kind of post-dutasteride syndrome. It makes you wonder why nobody talks about that, right? But anyways, this study only lasted a year, so it barely qualifies as a long-term study at all. But before we go on to the new study I mentioned before, there is one other study of long-term dutasteride use. It's this one right here. This was actually a comparison between dutasteride and finasteride, and it was based on a database review. It was not a prospective randomized controlled study. This study looked at 600 men. 295 of them were on dutasteride at 0.5 milligrams daily, and 305 of them were on finasteride. All these men had a confirmed diagnosis of androgenic alopecia, and they all had at least three years of follow-up after they had started on the drug treatment. This study didn't use the familiar Norwood Hamilton score to assess results. Rather, it used something called the BASP BASP scale. The BASP scale is the good Korean version of the Norwood scale, and it was first described in this article here. The scale is pretty complicated, as you can see here, and it is based on both the shape of the hairline and the amount of thinning in the frontal areas and vertex areas of the scalp. However, the details of the scale are not that important. What is important, though, is that in the comparison between finasteride and dutasteride, dutasteride appeared to be the more effective treatment than finasteride. But not only that, regardless of the pattern of hair loss, both drugs had a cumulative benefit over the three years it was given, as you can see right here. Surprisingly, the incidence of side effects was slightly lower with dutasteride versus finasteride. Overall, side effects occurred in 7.6% with dutasteride users versus 10.5% with finasteride users. However, when looking at just sexual side effects alone, the incidence was very, very low, occurring in just 1.6% of subjects on dutasteride and 1.1% of subjects on finasteride. So the author summarized the results of the study by saying, quote, in conclusion, findings from the study provide real-world evidence of the effectiveness and safety of dutasteride versus finasteride in the treatment of androgenic alopecia among patients treated for at least three years in South Korea. Importantly, results indicate that with the recommended dose of dutasteride, patients experience few adverse effects, which are slightly lower than finasteride-treated patients, unquote. So finally, we get to the recent study I mentioned at the start of this video, this one here, which is also from Good Korea. Now, the full article is protected by a paywall. However, by using the uridine sign and a dimeridium bomb, I was able to penetrate it like Geralt penetrates Yennefer and get full access to the article. So let's go ahead and use our Witcher senses to analyze it. First of all, like I said, it is from Good Korea. One reason why so many articles on dutasteride come from Good Korea is that dutasteride is actually approved for treating hair loss there, and it has been ever since 2009. So this article looked at 99 men who had been treated with dutasteride for at least five years. They used the same bath scale as the previous article, and evaluation was based on photographs of these subjects. The results show that after five years of treatment with dutasteride, 89.9% of subjects continued to show improvement compared to before they started the drug, and 93.9% showed a prevention of progression of hair loss. The authors note that sexual side effects were most common within six months of starting treatment, but these side effects subsided spontaneously. So these results are very similar to the long-term results with finasteride. The authors conclude that, quote, Dutasteride exhibited long-term safety and efficacy in male androgenic alopecia patients with comparable outcomes to long-term studies evaluating the efficacy of finasteride in male androgenic alopecia patients. This study is the first to demonstrate the long-term efficacy and safety data of dutasteride in male androgenic alopecia patients." Unquote. So this is very encouraging data. It still looks like dutasteride, just like with finasteride, works long-term, and we're talking about at least five years here, chums. There is no doubt in my mind that dutasteride works indefinitely just like finasteride does, and I am certain that as the dutasteride master race continues to bring attention to their venerated 5-AR inhibiting drug, that eventually we will have 10-year studies on dutasteride that will confirm that it continues to get benefits even after 10 years just like finasteride does. So the dutasteride 
Ride Master Race need not despair. The hype behind their treatment is fully warranted, and even as a measly finasteride peasant myself, I share their enthusiasm for dutasteride. I want to emphasize, though, that whether you are a finasteride peasant or part of the dutasteride master race, that both drugs are extremely effective at stopping hair loss and have a very similar safety profile, and I talk about that in my Truth About Dutasteride Side Effects video, which I'll link below. I think both drugs will completely stop or even reverse hair loss in the vast majority of people, so you can't go wrong with either drug. The only time I would probably insist people use dutasteride over finasteride is that they've been on finasteride for over two years and they are convinced they are still losing ground, or if they have an extremely aggressive type of hair loss, such as being a diffuse thinner who started balding in their teens. Other than that, which 5 error inhibiting drug you choose to use is based purely on your personal preference. Just make sure that you're using one of them, or you could possibly even use both of them. If you want some ideas about some treatment strategies for using finasteride and dutasteride, I'll go ahead and link some videos below that go over the details since I know I get asked about that a lot. So, I hope this still appeases the Dutasteride Master Race, and if not, don't worry because I'll be back with more content soon. Thank you for watching Hair Loss Witchers, God bless.